Do you know how many ads on average you see or hear in one day? Anywhere from 6,000 to 10,000 ads. That means if your business's email is opened on that day, readers spend an average of nine seconds skimming your email before they move on to the next email, social media, TV commercial, billboard, radio ad. So the way you design your email is crucial. You don't need to be a professional designer, but you do need to understand these six design principles before you get started. I'm Sky. I'm an email marketing strategist and I'm damn good at what I do. So let's get straight into this. First principle is email layout. The layout is going to determine how your reader flows through the email. Obviously we read from top to bottom, but studies have shown that majority of readers go from left to right and in a zigzag pattern. And then we fall off into what's called an F pattern. This means that we solely focus on the top part of the design and then we move down to the left side of the design and skim all the way down. This is where email templates are going to become really important in your business. If you have a few structured designs to follow, then you're not creating anything from scratch. I have a whole toolkit on this and I'm going to share more on that later. But first, let's look at some examples of email layouts by MailModo. The most common layouts are the inverted pyramid and the F pattern. And you can see in every layout here, the hero section, which is the top part of the email, follows one of those structures. You can see that the inverted pyramid is what starts the multi-column layout and the F pattern is how all the other email layouts are structured. Guiding the eye down and to the left side of the page where we can see the button or another heading, which is going to then further guide our reader down the email. The second principle is white space. And honestly, this is the one thing that's gonna make your email go from good to fucking fantastic. White space refers to any blank space surrounding your elements. According to the proximity design principle, objects that are placed closer together tend to be seen as one single unit rather than individual or unrelated parts. So by including more white space between different sections of your email design, you can help the reader flow through the email better. We also use white space within one section to space out, say, our images, our copy, and our CTA. So it's not cramped together and it it just improves readability. A little tip, if you have a chunky paragraph, add white space by simply dividing that paragraph into two or three smaller sections. White space applies to every aspect of email design and you would be surprised how much a little space between elements can make a massive design difference and help the reader scan and just digest the information better. All in all, it helps you get that click rate. Third principle is email copy. And a lot of marketers say you need to do copy first, but I honestly think it comes down to the type of email you're designing and also how your business is structured. Copy, just like the design, it needs to be flexible with each other so the final result can actually be achievable and look the way you want it to look. Here are two ways I recommend to create copy for an email. First is if you're designing your email from scratch, then the design can be flexible and it can move around the copy that's provided. But also keep in mind, as the design evolves, the copy may need to be adjusted slightly. And this is how I clearly list out all the copy that I think I would like to include. First, I'm gonna start with a hero heading. This is the heading that's going to pull attention and sum up the entire email. It needs to be punchy and it needs to be short. Next, I'm going to move on to the hero sentence. This is a short sentence explaining the hero in more detail. Next is the body copy. This includes any information you would like in the email with headings and relevant sentences. And lastly, any CTA buttons. These are your call to actions, including the copy you want on the CTA and exactly where you would like that within the email. CTA buttons are going to be peppered throughout your whole email design, so it's best to lay this out within the copy. When creating copy this way, it's best to do more than it is to have less copy because as the design evolves your copy can be adjusted or you can remove certain sections as you need. The second way of creating copy is if you are following an email template. This way copy becomes very easy, honestly, and you can simply create the copy around what the template needs. This email design here is from my toolkit and we have five areas that need copy. At the top, you have your hero image, which has the heading. Then we go into a short paragraph with a smaller heading and a CTA. In the middle, we have two smaller sections with short sentences and headings. And at the bottom, another heading, small paragraph and CTA. This is the template before you add imagery and copy and by following the template structure with your brand vibe it comes out looking something like this. 
Now we understand how to write copy, I want to touch on the design aspect of typography, which is the fourth principle. It's important to have native text within your email where you can. And native text is the text that you're going to physically type into your email service provider, not text that is part of an image and that you've just exported out of a system. There are a lot of reasons why I recommend this and it mainly comes down to keeping your sender reputation healthy, which is how you're going to stay in the inbox. And it also keeps your email design accessible accessible for things like screen readers and to those subscribers who choose not to display your images. Another thing to note is that not all email clients support branded fonts. So it's best to choose a web safe font that matches your brand very closely. Otherwise, each different email client like Gmail will show your email differently because they just don't support your font. Instead, they'll choose a fallback font which potentially doesn't match your brand at all and show it in a different way. The design is going to look different on every single email client. Here's a list of web safe fonts that all email clients support. A few of my favorites are Arial, Geneva, Helvetica, Georgia, Lucida, and Tahoma. But as I said, you want it to match your brand already. When it comes to choosing your web safe fonts and how you integrate this within your design, it's important to not have too many font types and choose a font that is easily scannable. So I recommend having two fonts and use your imagery to bring your brand to life, not just having to rely on your typography. And that brings me to the fifth principle, which is your imagery. A majority of emails in the e-commerce space are image-based emails. There's nothing wrong with text-based emails, but this video is purely focused on image-based emails. So imagery gives you the opportunity to pull attention, help tell the story, emulate brand feeling, also show off your products. But we do have to be careful of image size so that our readers are not waiting for the images to load. This is going to cause quick bounce rate. And if you know anything about metrics, we don't want people bouncing off too quickly. Here are the best practices when it comes to imagery. You need to keep your image dimensions between 600 to 900 pixels. This is for a full page design. So obviously if it's half that, you need to half that amount. The length dimension comes down to what your image is and can range in so many different sizes, but I would keep the images under 1,100 pixels in length. You need to export out as a PNG or a JPEG and you need to keep your images under one megabyte. If you're looking for a free software that helps downsize your images, head over to Tiny PNG. They're absolutely fantastic. As I said before, not every subscriber will allow images to show in their inbox. And this is where alt text plays a vital, vital part with your imagery. Alt text is a short description that you kind of pop behind the image. This all happens within your email service provider when you're building out the email, not when you're designing it in Canva or Photoshop. You want your alt text to help tell the story of your email backed with the native text and then other alt text. So for example, let's say our email layout is a simple inverted pyramid. If you don't include alt text on the image at the top, my subscriber would only read the native text and the button. So they're missing the main message and potentially even the urgency or the excitement about what the message actually is. So in this instance, behind this image, I would put up to 40% off. Now the email makes sense from top to bottom. So regardless of where the image is, it needs to carry the message from what's around it to complete the story of what the email is. Adding on to imagery, we can't use video in email, but we can use GIFs, which are my absolute favorite. Same rules apply to GIFs as they do with imagery. It's just that we export it in a different format, which is a GIF format. And you will also notice that GIFs are a lot bigger in size. So most email service providers only allow up to five megabytes, but that's still very, very high. So you don't want to exceed five megabytes in size, but you do want to keep it as low as possible. As GIFs are larger in size, so will be the load time. So something you do need to be aware of is that having too many GIFs in an email can be very distracting and obviously load time is a big deal. So staying between one or even two GIFs per email works a treat. The last principle is your CTA button, which means call to action. The primary focus of any email is to get the subscriber to click. 
So it's important to have very clear CTA buttons that are always visible even when the subscriber is scrolling through your email. A good CTA button will clearly stand out on the design, usually in a contrasting color, and, and it matches the overall design aesthetic. I recommend always to have one primary CTA and then a few secondary options. This is a great example again from Mailmodo and you can see that the primary CTA clearly pops out of the screen first and then the secondary ones are still there but they're not overpowering but they're still standing out. The copy on your CTA also needs to be direct and actionable and it has to match your brand voice. Here are some examples of these. So you've got shop or shop now, which is honestly the most common. Join the tribe, make it yours, shop new arrivals, save now. Honestly, the list goes on and you could probably store quite a few emails to get some inspiration. The size of your CTA really does matter because the consumer is used to smaller CTAs. You need to think about websites and apps. It's exactly what we're used to seeing. So I pulled out some examples of what I would call wrong and write CTAs. First we have Joa and theirs is quite chunky. It looks like another element of the design rather than a button where Etsy have a very clear CTA. It's small, but it pulls the attention straight down. We also have White Fox who have a very long CTA and it fades into the design and it's really just not clear. Where we have Key who have a simple CTA, it stands out, it's on brand and it matches the design perfectly. When it comes to email design as a whole, I swear by email templates. Most of the design elements are in place and it's just a matter of adding your imagery and adding your email copy. The best way to achieve this in your business is to have a few email templates for different email types. Some examples of these are your new arrivals, your product education, blog posts, back in stock. Every business is going to have different things that they talk about and for those different things you should have different templates. From there it's simply about picking the right template and following the structure to complete the email design. I have a whole email design toolkit which I created in Canva and it has eight email templates plus a video tutorial that walks you through how to first create your email brand guidelines then it shows you how to design your emails for your brand export it all from Canva and import it into your email service provider so if you need this in your life I've popped it in the description below I'm going to leave you with one final tip and that is get inspiration from other businesses they don't need to be similar to yours just anyone you truly enjoy sign up to their email list and start saving their designs. My absolute favorites in email designs at this point are Who Gives a Crap, Lemmy, Crop Shop Boutique, and Toiletries. Out of interest, if you have any favorites, please comment them below because I'm always looking for new brands to follow and stalk and get inspiration from as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.